second. So let's look at the numerator here. Can you tell me what factors out of 20 minus 5x squared? Okay, we're not just going to take the 5. Negative. We're going to take the negative 5. Okay, now here's how that's going to look. Watch carefully. If we factor out not only, if we factor out 5, we're going to get uh, 4 minus x squared. You see that? That's not exactly what I want. What I want is to make the x squared term positive. Make the x squared term positive. And you're going to see why in just a second. Right now, this is probably not apparent to you that this is a difference of squares. Do you see a difference of squares here? Yeah. Some of you might. Some of you are like, what are you talking about? It doesn't look like a difference of squares to me. But if you factor out the negative 5, check it out. I'm going to rewrite this. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> if you factor out the negative 5, you get, instead of 4, how much do you get there? Good. Now we're, we're dividing, and you're going to get plus x squared. You factored the negative out of it. It changed both signs inside. You with me on this, folks? How many people are with me on that step right there? Good, okay. Now, the last question I have for you about this, is it okay if I include the signs but flip these things around? Is that okay? Yeah. So instead of negative 4 plus x squared, can I have x squared minus 4? Yes. Okay, I'm going to do that. So negative 5 stays there. x squared minus 4. The reason why we do this, this thing is a whole lot easier to work with than this thing is. For most Oh, well, then the thing I had here before was, for most people, this is a lot easier to see that that's a difference of squares. Can you see it now a little bit easier? Yeah. And you know what? We're going to have to factor out a negative anyway. You're going to see this in a second. You are going to have to do that. So you may as well do it at the beginning rather than at the end. You're going to have to do it anyway. So do it at the very beginning. It's easier to work with, and you don't make any mistakes on it. So we have the, the numerator done. Let's work on the denominator now. With our denominator. Can we factor that thing? Yeah. How? Okay. So let's do that. Can y'all tell me what number goes on the top, please? And on the bottom? We look for two numbers. I'm going to start doing these more quickly because we've been practicing this for now, like every section we've done here. Uh, the one and the, the negative six, we're going to get three and two somehow. Yeah, it's going to be three negative two. Now, do I need to split this up and factor by grouping? No. No, this goes directly to my factors. So right here, I write x plus 3. I write x minus 2. And I can continue that on. Now, we did say factor completely. What we've done so far, we factored out the negative out of the numerator, the negative 5. We factored the denominator completely. You can't do anything more with this. But there is something more I can do with that, the x squared minus 4. Do you remember how to factor that thing? How many people do remember how to factor that thing? I hope that you do. That's the difference of squares, and you're going to start seeing this quicker and quicker as we go through this. I'm going to take a little trip down here and do the factoring underneath this problem. So if I look at x squared minus 4, Remember that a difference of squares is a difference of two squares, which means I'm really thinking of this as x squared minus two squared. Same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we've done this problem before in this class. When you factor a difference of squares, you end up getting two parentheses just like here, but it's already kind of given to you what you're going to have. You're going to have an x in both spots. You're going to have a two in both spots. Not a four, a two, the thing that's actually being squared. That's the number you put there. Uh, I gave you the form a squared minus b squared when I first introduced this. So this acts as our b in this case. We have the 2 and the 2. Notice when we multiply, that's giving us the value of 4. Are you with me on that? When you foil it. The only thing you have to remember is that one of these signs is a plus and one of these signs is a minus. That's how you factor a difference of squares. So this is going to go on the top and with this negative 5. So the negative 5 is still there. We'll be factored this as x minus 2 x plus 2. So let's take a little recap about what we did. We noticed that we really do want to make the x squared term positive. If we do that, trust me, it's easier to work with. I'll show you in a second. If you really need me to prove it to you, I'll show you that in a second. 
So we factor out the negative, making that x squared term positive. We're going to switch it around to write the x terms first. That way it's easy to factor. So that's the only thing we're doing from here to here. I've switched these terms around. On the denominator, diamond method, because we have three terms, no problem. There's no extra step. That's actually a pretty easy one. We get down to here, we make sure we factor our numerator completely. That's the difference of squares. And now we're all the way down to here. Each of these factors is factored completely. How many people feel okay getting down to that, that far? Good, all right. Is there anything else that we can do? Cool. Do we cancel, or like you like to say cancel, right? Love to cancel stuff out. Do we cancel or simplify common terms or common factors? Which one? Terms. terms are these things. Terms. terms are these things. Factors, oh, factors. factors is this and this and this and this and this. Terms are added and subtracted. Factors are multiplied and divided. What do we want to simplify? Factors out. Entire things or nothing at all. That's all we do. So here, since we have our x minus 2's, you all see that. Those are gone. Just rewrite whatever you have left over. You don't need to distribute. You, you spent so much time factoring. Don't distribute that back in. Just leave it. We spent a lot of time factoring in this class. Leave it factored. Negative 5 times x plus 2 all over x plus 3. You'll notice I had to leave the parentheses here because that negative 5 was up front. But here I don't need the parentheses because that's the only factor we had left. You feel still okay with this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now I would like to show you why this step is kind of important. Would you like to see it real quick? Yeah. Okay, here's the why. Let's say that I didn't factor out the negative 5. You're still going to have to do the problem. However, you're still going to have to factor out a negative 2. You'll see what I mean. So if I go right down here and I factor out positive 5, I'm going to get 4 minus x squared over, this thing's going to factor exactly the same. This actually still is a difference of squares, only it doesn't factor as x minus 2, x plus 2. What it factors as is 2 minus x, 2 plus x. Do you see the difference there? Then when you have down here this x plus 3, x minus 2, my question is, do these things simplify? No. no, they're not exactly the same. This is the thing I gave you last time. They said, oh, you know what? If you have the values exactly the same, but the signs are different, you have to factor out a negative 1 here to make them the same. Do you remember that from last time? So you got to do it anyway. So right here you go, oh, okay. From here I need to factor a negative 1. And people seem not to really grasp this concept as well, which is why I gave you it this way. Because you'd have to do this. If you go, okay, I'm going to pull the negative 1 out. But what it's going to do is make that a negative 5. Do you see that? This one is going to become x minus 2 and then 2 plus x. And a lot of people ask me, well, how do you get from here to here? What, what are you even doing? And the thing I'm doing is I'm factoring out a negative 1. It's changing both of these signs. I'm reordering it. The negative one's going out front. Now you can simplify those and we get exactly the same answer. It's only these two things are switched around, which is fine because that's addition. Now, to me, this way seems a whole lot easier to do at the beginning. To me. I don't like waiting to the end to factor out a negative 1. Um, I like factoring out the negative at the beginning, making sure your, x, uh, your, your largest power is positive. It's way easier to factor, especially if you have to use a diamond problem. Uh, and we end up getting the right answer without a whole lot of extra work. Do you see the point in that? So that statement I made last part of class, Factor so you get the largest the term with the largest x one positive. It's kind of a nice, nice easy deal for us. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. What I'd like to do, I would like to give you a couple examples on your own. Are you ready for a couple examples on your own? One's going to kind of refresh your memory about what we did yesterday, and one's going to be similar to this one. Okay, so I'd like to do that, factor that one, and simplify, and then do this one.
And if you want to be brave after that, if you finish these things early, there's another one we're going to do together right now. I'm actually going to go through and show you how to factor a sum of cubes uh, in the problem. So in each case, we're trying to factor the numerator and the denominator completely. That's very important. You know, so you're going to try to factor to keep the term with the largest exponent positive. If the term with the largest exponent is already positive, well, that's great. You don't need to factor out a negative. But if it's not, then you're going to want to factor out a negative. That's the whole idea here. about one more minute. Let's see how far we can get in one more minute. Okay, we're going to get started up here on the first one. If you still work on the second one, that's okay. If you're on the 